so i mean you have basically come up with the circuit in some sense so it is nice to understand how a circuit arises about but we also should be able to analyze it so let's see how we can quickly analyze this guy let us say v in v out and let's say i'm interested in v out at the end of phi 2 because that's when things finally happen and settle okay now again to solve any circuit what will you do if you have any lumped circuit how will you solve it okay huh i mean i give you any circuit and ask you to find the voltages and currents in the circuit use kcl so you'll do the same thing here also okay but one thing is the circuit operates in two different phases so let's quick let me first quickly draw the circuit in the two phases so in phi 1 we have this guy and for analyzing this i'll assume that 1 and 1e are all same remember that this early clock was there for preventing charge injection right now i'm not worried about that for my analysis i'll assume that 1e is same as 1 this is v in c and what happens to cf so this also grounded right fine let us say cf so let's say in this polarity what is the voltage stored across capacitor c minus v in so i'll call it voltage stored at the end of the phase phi 1 and put a subscript 1 okay. so in this polarity what is the voltage stored across cf zero fine so let me draw the circuit in phi 2 so in phi 2 i basically have this configuration so c and cf so in this polarity what is voltage stored across c now zero so in the same polarity what is the voltage stored across cf if i call this v out minus v out or plus v out it's minus v out okay great and i am interested in finding the voltage at the end of phi 2 so which of these two circuits i'll analyze i mean logically speaking which of the circuit i should uh, st start to analyze i'm interested in the voltage at the end of phi 2 so basically i'll try to analyze this guy okay so again i'll simply follow kcl blindly so here i have two currents i'll call it say i1 and i2 some of these two currents is zero right so basically i1 of t plus i2 of t is 0 fine and remember i1 is the current flowing through the capacitor c and how is the current related to to the voltage for a capacitor right so it's basically c into dvc by dt so let's quickly check how the voltage across capacitor c is looking like let's say this is time axis let me Yeah, let's say this is phi one and phi two. So I'll not even show this guy. This is enough. So in phi one, what was the voltage across capacitor C? We have written already, right? Minus V in. So let us say it is some minus V in. And in phi two, what is happening to it? Zero. We'll assume that we all have ideal switches and ideal op amp. So the moment you put this connection, this is instantly becoming zero. So the voltage will instantly become zero. So if this is the voltage across capacitor uh, C, and this is minus V in mind you. So what is the current? How will the current look like? And in pulse, what will be the area? Minus V in or plus V in? It is going from minus V in to zero. It's a positive jump or a negative jump. So the area will be. V in, okay. Basically, C V in. Okay. So if I were to write this, the current is what now? C times V in into delta of P, and V in I can think of it as zero minus minus V in. 
I mean that is basically the final value minus initial value this times delta of t. Similarly, if I uh, plot the voltage across CF, initially voltage across CF was 0 and it is now jumping to minus V out. So, I will use this color maybe. So, it was 0 and then going to some minus V out. I don't know what is it. What will be its current? Yeah. It will be CF times V out, right? Yeah. Minus. Yeah. Okay. So, this again I can write as CF times. I have the final voltage which is minus V out minus initial voltage 0 times delta of T. Some of these two currents is 0. Fine. So, moving to next page. I will actually copy the entire thing. Yeah, okay. Great. And this is going here. So, from this, you can, uh, I mean, if this is 0, which means C times 0 minus minus V in plus CF times 0, fine. And what is this guy? C times C delta V, what is that? <coughs> it's basically the delta Q. Yeah. This is basically delta Q. Okay. And from this you can actually find out uh, V out is basically same, right? C by C of times V. Okay. Yeah, yeah, I mean I'm just saying in general how you analyze it. I mean that, that circuit we came up through some logic. This is to understand how you can analyze any circuit. And basically this you can think of it like this, uh, you can assume that this is a circuit in phi 2 and let us say this is basically uh, what I am doing is delta q summation of delta q 0 that is another way of writing KCL. I look at this node and find what is the charge stored in these two plates right that is basically C times 0 plus C f times minus V out. So, basically what I am writing is uh, the first term here. This is equal to here let us say I bring these two guys to the RHS. This is minus V in times C plus 0 times Cf. Okay. So, what essentially I mean this equation you can write it like this and this you can interpret as follows. So, you take the node, look at the plates of the capacitor connected there, the charges stored on those two plates in the current phase the same as the charges stored in those two plates in the previous phase. So, in phi 1 the circuit looked like this. This was Cf and this was C. In the previous phase in this plate the charge is minus Cv in in this plate it is 0. I mean this is basically you might have seen charge conservation right this is basically that. But why I am going in this way is I mean uh, I see many times the moment students see circuits with switches and capacitors they resort to charge conservation. If I ask them why, why do not you solve using KCL they say I do not know. The point is any circuit you can solve using KCL. Any lumped circuit for that matter you can solve using KCL. And the deal is the moment you assume that we have ideal switches and ideal capacitors, all the currents are all impulses. In that, in that case, the KCL basically boils down to having this kind of simple charge conservation. Okay. In fact, you can solve the circuit directly using KCL. So, one way you can do is in phase 2, the circuit is looking like this again. Let me, this is done. This is how the circuit is looking in phase 2. Now, I know that both the capacitors had stored some voltage in the previous clock phase. The initial condition of a capacitor, you can represent as a series voltage source like this with proper polarity and then you can directly apply KCL and find out. Okay. And in fact, if 
in in our case we assume we have ideal switches so the currents were all impulses but if we assume finite on resistance for this guy currents will no longer be impulse if you want to find the actual v not of t you have to do kcl but in switch cap circuits we usually choose the rc to be much much smaller than the settling i mean the clock period so we are interested in the final settled value assuming that the output will all settle in that case i can ignore the effect of this resistor and assume i have impulsive currents and then i can actually directly do this game that okay and i mean even if you actually write kcl right if you write kcl in time domain you get basically you know some c dv by dt and stuff right something 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 so if you write in kcl in time domain you get this differential equations so to what is the simpler way to apply kcl to get get it of this differential integral equations you write kcl in laplace domain and that basically summation of currents in laplace domain is zero and if you what is the units of i of s units of i of s okay what is i of s how will you find it huh i i from the current dt right so this is units of ampere this ampere second what is the units of ampere second what quantity has ampere second what quantity has units of ampere seconds charge i mean basically when you are right solving for a circuit in laplace domain you are basically doing this charge conservation indirectly okay and if you do it you can actually find the entire circuit dynamics like this i mean if this is basically t and let's say some v out of t you can find the proper dynamics like this if you take the inverse laplace transform but if you are interested only in the settled value in that case what is the value of s you will use s is the frequency if i am interested if sorry no t is infinite what is s zero that's basically the dc or the steady state and the moment you put s equal to zero here what you get and what is integral i of t dt that is the actual charge okay this when you apply kcl at s equal to zero that boils down to a simple charge conservation okay so the uh, bottom line is this if you are given these circuits assume that the switch resistor is negligible and you can solve for the settled value directly using charge conservation and the deal is you look at the relevant circuit just like kcl you choose a particular node you find the capacitors or the plates of the capacitors attached to that node the charges stored in all those plates in the current phase will be same as the charges stored in those plates in the previous phase that's a simpler way of looking at charge conservation but uh, in, at any point you can solve any circuit using kcl that's what i want to emphasize okay, because kcl is a more fundamental thing maxwell's equations and kcl are more fundamental everything else is all subset of so let's look at some few examples to just make sure you are fine uh, yeah let's say i take some case where this is some v in one let us say in phase one i have connection like this one c2 okay and let's say i have another capacitor c3 this is let us say grounded in phase two let us say i put these two capacitors in parallel and let us say i am interested or let us say this is not even ground this is say some v in 2 and let us say i am interested in finding the voltage across the capacitor c3 at the end of phase 5 2 okay so let us see how we can find so again the we are interested in finding voltage at the end of phase 2 so which of these two circuits you look at phase 2 so i'll choose a particular node like kcl these are the two plates attached i can show in different colors to make it colorful so in the phase 2 what is the charge stored here c2 v out plus c3 v out this is equal to the charges stored on those two plates in the previous clock phase so c2 stop plate is here c3 stop plate is here so what is this C two V in one. 
this is the same thing okay so let me let's do, let's do one more example what example can we do okay let's say c1 c2 and this is lay phi1 phi2 and phi1 this is v in this is v out okay and here again the let's say the quantity of interest is v out at the end of phi2 yeah let's say phi2 so same old so first i'll draw the circuits in the two phases so in phi1 i have something like this okay this is v in in phi2 i am just connecting the two capacitors in parallel fine and i am interested in the circuit at the end of phi2 so i'll analyze this circuit i just have one node so i look at the charges stored in these two what is the charge stored i mean the voltage here is what you have to find v out remember what is the charge it's basically v out to c1 plus c2 this will be same as the charges stored in these two plates in the previous phase and what is that and then we can get this okay so i'll show one more example uh, so basically you can see that in these switch capacitor circuits we are essentially uh, dealing with the input samples or discrete time samples like x of n v of n and so on okay so we can actually uh, realize any kind of discrete time transfer function h of z using these circuits so i will explain what that is so let's say you want to realize something h of z one thing you have to be clear is since we are interested in the samples we have to clearly specify if i have a signal v of t how is v of n obtained that is now i have let us say two clocks i am having sampling these are the two sampling edges right falling edges is our falling edges are our sampling instance i have to clearly specify signal sampled at which of these two falling edges is being defined as v of n okay and let us say i define that uh, v of t at the end of phi1 this phi1 okay so let me draw one more clock so this is let us say uh, the sampling instant nts so what will be this time instant huh? n minus 1 ts so usually you will say that uh, this is n minus half ts i mean although the time is not ts by 2 it is just to denote that this is from a previous clock phase not the previous clock cycle it is from a previous clock phase and we'll probably look at a circuit like this okay. and now let us say the goal is to find what is the transfer function h of z realized between v in and v out so basically you want to find v out of n in terms of v in of n okay and we have been we have defined that signal sampled at falling edges of phi1 that is when that those are the sampling instants v in of t sampled at the end uh, nts is v in of n v out of v out of t sampled at this edge is v out of n so again uh, let's see how we can solve so i'll do the same thing again first let me draw the circuits in two phases phi1 so in phi1 we have this okay and in phi 2 this which is connected this is open we just have these two connected in parallel like this fine and i am interested in v out of n so in which which of the two circuits i should look at in phi 1 or phi 2 phi 1 because the nts is basically defined with respect to phi 1 so i look at uh, this guy and let us say uh, now i look at nts okay 
and when i do charge conservation i look at uh, this circuit and the circuit in the previous phase right so this is this phase the previous phase is this no there i didn't define any sampling instant right it was all constant if you recollect it was all v in v out here the, i assume that signals are all constant it's okay but when you have time varying signals we have to be consistent with these so i look at this circuit and the circuit in the previous clock phase which is this okay and the uh, and in the previous clock phase what was the time end of the phase here it is nts in the previous clock phase which is this what is the end time n minus half ts okay so again let's uh, do try to do charge conservation i'll do charge conservation here because this is what i'm interested in so just one note the output node what is the charge here c2 v out it's v out of n we should be now consistent with the time instance okay and this will be equal to the charge stored in this plate in the previous clock phase and remember this is also v out this is v out at what time instant n minus half so this is same as c2 times v out of n minus half okay but remember we are supposed to find v out of n in terms of v in of n there should be nothing like n minus half n minus half is all intermediate voltages that we have defined so to find this first i have to find this okay so which means i have to now apply charge conservation here is it okay so here if i apply charge conservation i look at this circuit which is at n minus half ts and consider the circuit in the previous clock phase so this is this clock phase no just that plate see please remember i am applying charge conservation to this circuit so charges stored in this plate the same as the charges stored in the same plate in the previous clock phase that's all okay so now we are applying charge conservation to this circuit at n minus half ts i should be looking at the circuit in the previous clock phase which is this guy we are looking at here now the previous clock phase is this and what is the time instant what is the time instant in the previous clock phase n minus 1 okay so here it's n minus half so let's try to apply uh, you know charge conservation in the second circuit here if i apply that what do i get c1 plus c2 times n minus half that is the charges stored in these two plates this is same as the charges stored in the same plates in the previous clock phase and what is that remember this is v in ah it is what v in of n minus 1 plus okay fine so see some blank faces see this is v in of n minus 1 times c1 that is this charge similarly this voltage is v out v out at the time instant n minus 1 times c2 is this charge that's all okay and now we can solve for it uh, i know that this guy v out of n minus half is same as v out of n so that simplifies things so i will have c1 plus c2 v out of n c2 v out of n minus 1 right this is the difference equation so how do i find the transfer function ha huh? i'll take z transform we have everyone done something on z transform no no okay for now we can think that it is like h of s in continuous time we are finding h of z one thing you remember is if i have any signal v in of n if it has a transform h of z if it has if the signal is v in of n plus k what is the transform it is z power k times h of z this much if you remember we can solve right so if i apply uh, z transform what do i get yeah. 
it is laplace transform in continuous laplace transform is for continuous time signals this is basically the same thing in discrete time i mean here we have continuous time fourier transform here we saw dtft and dft right now similar to fourier transform we had a laplace transform and the analogous of laplace transform in discrete time signal is z transform that much is enough for you to start and remember this property this is enough for us so if we apply z transform the first term is this what is rhs it is remember it is n minus 1 so i love z power minus 1 z inverse v in of z plus c2 z inverse v out of z so now i can uh, my transfer function is basically v out of z by v in of z okay that's just a simple manipulation you can find this will be this guy this is a simple algebra is it okay so uh, i just want you to remember understand how the transfer function here is computed especially when you are dealing with time varying signals like this only thing is you should be consistent with the time instance okay so in, at least in our course we'll make sure that i mean we define that signal sampled at end of clock phase 51 is v of n okay so when you apply charge conservation you should be very careful with this time indexes because the moment you screw up that the entire thing will change right so if you are comfortable with this i'll give a example you can work out and we'll discuss in the next class so i'll just take this guy take this guy and try to work it out c2c3 again this is v in this is v out convention is same any signal sampled at the end of 51 is v of n and your goal is to find v out of n in terms of v in of n and pass samples of v out of n let's say v out of n minus 1 n minus k so no i mean once you have it you can take z transform and then find h of z i mean i just took, did it for this portion now i added one more branch you can find it given the mod of when we know that there will be the entire field right like between that i understand okay uh, okay Yeah, yeah. So it turns out for DC we should put z equal to one. I mean, you guys, you guys don't take any uh, z transform course, is it? Okay. 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 One signal and distance course only you guys took. Okay. 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 Then probably we'll cover the requirements in z transform later. We'll require it in the later part of the course. But for now, this much is enough for you guys. Assume that if you have v of n, it's v of z. v of n minus k will transform to z power minus k times v of z okay and z transform is essentially if you what want to know h like of z is maybe that equals 0 so we get that dc yeah yeah but in z transform you have to put z equal to 1 actually okay i mean we, the definition is see in continuous time uh, what is this s how is s related to the continuous frequency omega I mean, S is basically some sigma plus j omega, right? Okay. In discrete time, we define z to be e power j omega. That's all. This omega is discrete frequency. So, if you want to find dc, you put omega equal to zero. So that gives z equal to one. So this much, you guys, if you understand, we should be able to carry on. So let's stop.